Christians for Jesus. God and see the assembly of God. God and see the assembly of God. God and see the assembly of God. display of offense resentment let me slip this in offense offense turn around to somebody using offense I've understood this that proud people get offended more quickly proud people are very touchy people they hurt about something all the time I'm hurt 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 what happened today he said that to me tomorrow hurt 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 what happened to you today she looked at me like that mm. Third day, I'm hurt, 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 hurt. What happened today? I called my son and he just cut me. I'm hurt. Hurt, 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 hurt. Take them to the hospital, please. Hurt, hurt, hurt. No time, no time for these kind of things. You got to set them right. That's why I was telling you in the first service, you know, but I was shocked to, about this book written on forgiveness. Because to, I don't know what is the problem of unforgiveness. Why do you know? Why wouldn't you want to forgive? I don't know. And do you know the tragedy of all of this? This is statistics. 80% of people who read these kind of books don't change. They don't change. Because that's become a lifestyle. You should understand. You're stuck to that sticky, stupid thing 40, 50 years. So now how can you change? You design your clothes to accommodate that bulge. Look at me now. <laughs> when you look at me this way, can anyone say I got a big punch? No. Nobody, right? Look at this. There's no punch at all. Credit is to who? My tailor. True? He designed my suit in such a way that my Madhya Pradesh it's nicely covered. It's not exposed. That's what happens to Christians. We are so used to carrying weight that now what do we do? We camouflage it. We cover it up so that we look nice. But really, we're rotten inside. Proud people get offended very quickly. Always wounded. Wounded people hurt. But deal with it. Deal with it. Otherwise the devil will use you to destroy. Second Samuel 13, 21, 22. And then David, King David heard of all these things. He was very angry. <coughs> and Absalom spoke to Ammon, neither good nor bad. For Absalom hated Ammon. Because he humbled his sister Tamar. He raped his sister. Absalom was David's son. Was offended when his half-brother Ammon raped his sister Tamar. And what angered him more was David did nothing. According to the Levitical law, there was a procedure of, of, of discipline that had to be followed. But David did not bother. David just let him go. He allowed incest, which was bad. Absalom had all right to be upset. I'm not justifying Absalom here. Absalom had all right, but then he was under authority. Sometimes when you're under authority, you've got to submit to your leader or ship out. As simple as a shape up or ship out. As simple as that. Absalom got easily offended and that's dangerous be careful don't be easily offended take corrections rightly be teachable one of the greatest characteristics that you you need to develop in your life is teachability don't get defensive all the time when someone is trying to correct you don't get defensive when you're defensive it's a poor characteristic it's not teachability it's not teachability if you want to be successful in life, you've got to be teachable. Even your children can teach you things. E even a little boy can teach you things. Even a little girl can teach you things. Be teachable. Be teachable. Number three. Dishonor the leader by passivity. 
passivity. What do I mean by passivity? Passive, unresponsive, inactive, unreceptive. You're playing dead body. When I was in school, for some time we wanted to be cowboys. So we had a game called play dead body. What was the game? We guys would get together and suddenly one fellow will have, act like he's got a gun and he's a dishum. And the moment the dishum I hear, I should act dead. You're acting dead. And Absalom spoke to Ammon, neither good nor bad. In other words, he was silent. For Absalom hated Ammon because he had humbled his sister. People who can harbor anger for long, harbor hatred in your heart. Have you come across people who haven't spoken for years? Children, brother to brother, sister to brother, they haven't spoken for years? That's not a good thing. Don't be proud of it. Don't be proud of it. You are harboring hatred and that's exactly what happened here. Humble his sister and two full years, Absalom had sheep shearers at Belhazor near Ephraim. And Absalom invited all the king's sons. Now Absalom commanded his servants, notice now, when Ammon's heart is merry with wine. And when I say to you, strike Ammon, then kill him. If passivity is not checked, it will kill. It will kill. Fear not, have not I commanded you? Be courageous and brave. Who gave him the authority? This was self-inflicted authority. Absalom was David's son. He remained inactive and passive for two years. Two years. Because his sister was raped. Notice that he plans a party. And he kills Ammon as revenge. Silence does not mean the offense is forgotten. It just means hatred is brewing. That is why you should settle your problems. That's what the Bible says. Settle your disputes before the sun sets. Don't cling on to it. Because what happens? Hatred grows. And before you realize the person you loved, you hate. The pastor you loved, you hate. For no wrong. But you have allowed it in your life. Passivity. And you will notice that such passive people, I've noticed something in church, when suddenly people get passive, when they go silent, it's a matter of time before they leave the church. Because passive people will always abandon the church. They will always abandon the church. Always abandon the church. I will tell you a secret that I've learned in ministry. Watch the ones that flow with you, Watch the ones that do not flow with you. It is always the ones that will flow with you that will stand with you. Always watch that. Unless two agree, they cannot walk together. Don't be carried away by these supra spirituals who don't laugh in church. Oh, don't, no, no, no. It's nothing to do with jokes. It's a spiritual issue. They have got into passivity mode. And the irony is they sit here expecting the blessings to come to them. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. Passivity has to stop. I was talking about that in the last week, I think. Passivity is like neutral gear. No, no, no. Neutral gear at least flows two ways. I'm sorry, I take that back. Passivity is voluntarily disagreeing. Wanting to be a stubborn person. Wanting to stump. They want to see you sad always. They cannot rejoice in your victory. They cannot rejoice in your success. They cannot re see what God has done. Someone else does something, they'll clap their hand. When you do it, they cannot. Why? Because they have allowed passivity to enter in. What do you do? Repent. Honor the man of God. Honor. Don't ignore your leader. Don't ignore your boss. Carry the vision of your leader. If you don't like him, talk to him. Separate peacefully. Don't muck up things. No. There's a matured way of doing things. 
there's a much way of doing things but many times the devil makes it so ugly and so dirty that it cannot be cleansed and either one party has to run away in order to separate that that's very bad it's very bad that's why you need messages like this to caution you when you see people in your home even passive not bothered what's happening be very sure you're heading for disloyalty you're heading for disloyalty honor be part of something that you believe if you're not part of, if you don't believe it, don't be there. I'm not being rude, but just don't be there. Don't be there. <coughs> Shake the passivity and get involved. Because they're not keeping quiet. So the danger is they're not silent. They're sitting and watching and breeding hatred within, which ultimately produces death. All right, number four. Danger of a critical spirit. A passive spirit will always lead to a, to a critical spirit because they get tired of being silent. They get tired of being silent. So what do they do? They get agitated. They get frustrated. And then they talk. Then they talk. And they have nothing good to say. They will only talk negative. Critical spirit. Numbers chapter 12 and verse 1. Now Miriam and Aaron talked about Moses, their brother, because of his Cushite wife, for he had married a Cushite. Miriam and Aaron were talking about Pastor Moses' marriage life. Critical spirit. If you can attack the man of God, you think you can attack the church. Be careful, be careful, be careful. A disloyal person will always move from passivity to criticizing, to critical spirits. They'll criticize the pastor. You'll criticize the word. Critical spirit. You have no right to criticize anybody unless you have gone through what they have gone through. I have never ever encouraged critical spirits critical spirit criticize some people got to criticize everything they go buy the fruits some people are that way you send them to the vegetable market yeah and the takali if i was a takali owner or seller i was a muji madri Criticize everything. Oh, it's too cold. It's too hot. Critical spirit. Critical spirit. You know, the sad part of the critical spirit destroys you and not the other person. That's why I'm here. You may not like what I'm saying today, but I'm saying this because I love you. <laughs> I'm not trying to hit anybody. Don't be so immature and sit there. He's hitting me. I am not. I got better things to do in life. I'm preaching this way because I love you and I want you to be blessed. I don't want you to be weighed down by these stupid kindergarten games. Let's rise up like men and women of anointing and do what God wants us to do. Yes, put your hands together and give a lot a big hand of praise. Proverbs 11:27. He who diligently seeks good seeks God's favor. And he who searches after evil, it shall come after him. Stage five, dealing with others politically. Second Samuel chapter 15, three and six. Second Samuel chapter 15, and I want you to follow with me. Just like the Jezebel spirit, there is something called the Absalom spirit. And it's very subtle. It's very subtle. The Absalom spirit. And I want to read verse 3 onwards. And Absalom said to him, See, your matters are good and right. 
And there is no man deputed for the king of the king to hear you. Now what Absalom used to do, Absalom used to go to the city gate. People who originally came to meet the king, this rascal will meet them at the gate and butter them up. Tell them what they want to hear. Sow seeds of discord and disrespect against the king. And Absalom said, see, I know your matter. They are very good. I understand your pain. But the problem is, pastor is not bothered. Have you heard such people talk? Verse 4. Absalom said, moreover, oh, that I were made the judge in the land, and every man should, uh, which has a, 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 any suit, which meaning a case, or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. Here's he trying to suggest something now. I will do what you want to do. Verse 5. And it was so that any man came to him, he would put his hand out, and he, they, no, they would put their hand forth and took him and kissed him. Be careful. Disloyal people. Don't give room for Absaloms. Thank God for mannerisms. Thank God for people who are concerned. But don't get carried away by false concerns okay oh my goodness six deception 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 now we don't have time to read this entire thing but please read Ezekiel chapter 28 12 to 14 and 17 so I'm not going to read the entire passage but deception be careful of deception see what's happening now through the process of disloyalty you are changing your shape many times and in order to accommodate what you want to accommodate, you've got to be deceptive. You've got to be deceptive. Lucifer was deceptive. Appointed by God. He was a great anointed fellow, but lost it. Deception. You've got to be very careful that deception doesn't take your place. Be original. Keep clear, keep, keep a clear conscience, settle your arguments every day, don't carry them on. You're not going to get a gift by doing it. No. History proves that it rots you faster than anyone else. So don't do that, don't do that. Come out of it in Jesus' name. Number seven, driven by open rebellion. All right, now you should understand, disloyalty now can't wait. All right, they have been passive. They have been, let's go through the list so you don't understand what, where, where we are. All right, they have been, uh, where are we? Independent spirit. They have been frowning and frowning and trying to show displeasure. Nothing is working. They go into passivity. They don't cooperate with you. They just stay quiet. Now nothing is working still. So what do they do? They get into critical spirit. Now they start uh, uh, accusing you, throwing stones at you, blaming you. Then what do they do? When that doesn't work, they go around you and try to win favor from people with you. Build a house within the house. So silly, but that's what they do. They try to build a house within the house. I don't understand this so much. When they don't agree with the pastor, why do they want the members of the same church? Isn't it so funny? They can't handle the pastor, but they need the fellowship of the members. The church is the reflection of the pastor. So if you dislike the pastor, you will dislike the church. As simple as that. As simple as that. Then deception. They get into acting. They begin to cheat you through deception. Open rebelling. Now they come to open rebelling. And this is dirty. It's getting ugly. See, disloyalty gets ugly. It gets ugly. Look at this. This is horrific. This is sad. 2 Samuel chapter 16 was 11 and 22. 2 Samuel chapter 16, 11 and 22. And David said to Abishai, and all his servants, behold, my son who was born to me seeks my life. With how much more reason now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone and let him curse. For the Lord has bidden him to do it. So they spread for Absalom a tent on the top of the king's house. And Absalom went into his father's harem and the sight of all Israel. Now Absalom now, they were desperately trying to provoke David. What do, what do people with, with these, uh, 
with disloyal spirit do they provoke the leadership always understand that they provoke the leader they will always throw allegations about him they will always try to upset him they will always send that nasty SMS they will always send that last nasty email they will always threaten him what are they doing they're constantly trying to provoke him now this is exactly what this fellow was doing now what does he do he wants to tarnish David so badly that David will be fed up and step down so what does he do he goes to say it crudely and bluntly he goes and sleeps with his father's own concubines so that he thought David seeing this now is going to be fed up and throw in the towel throw in the towel <laughs> Dead. Lucifer but you know the tragic end of this Lucifer rebelled where did he end up in hell Judas rebelled where did Judas end hung himself upside down Absalom what did he do you read the story he himself had a tragic end anybody that dishonors God will not succeed will not succeed long hair got stuck and died what a tragic death what a tragic death that's stage number eight I've just over overshot that step number eight is death disloyalty death but can I tell you something that is rather sad here stage number eight is death but notice very clearly here it's not the death of the leader it's the death of the person understand that the leader doesn't die God will protect him you can be harsh at the leader God will comfort me you can mock the leader God will comfort but you be careful of your own soul otherwise you will die everyone that stood against the anointed suffered a bad death Absalom Judas Lucifer and the list can go on be careful disloyalty let me go real fast through the outline so that you will understand understand it clearly disloyalty starts with an independent spirit it gets offended easily offended dishonors the leader by first beginning to criticize starts politicking spirit of deception takes over open rebelling against the leader because what's happening in the process you're getting bolder the devil is giving you enough energy to get bolder but it's for your own fall and finally what does God do he executes judgment over the disloyal believer Heavenly Father, this morning I thank you and I praise you. As a church, we have done a detailed study on disloyalty. We have understood it from the Word of God, how destructive it can be and how dangerous it can be. I pray that you would deal with every hard heart. Ultimately, they're not rebelling against a man, they're rebelling against God. Soften their heart so that once again the peace of God would rule their heart and life I pray Almighty God that you would take control and bless this congregation let us rise to another level let us move to a higher level and be strengthened by your wisdom and by your might bless God's people supernaturally for your glory and for your honor and all of God's people said Amen kind of raise your hand as I bless you the Lord bless you and watch and guard over you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and enlighten you and be gracious, kind, merciful, giving favor. The Lord lift up his approving countenance upon you and give you peace and tranquility of heart and life continually. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. God sent His Son, they call Him Jesus, He 